Now that we know what functions are, let's take a look at something called function notation. Uh, back in the 1700s, uh, there was a mathematician by the name of Leonard Euler, uh, actually Swiss, so it's uh, spelled a little funny. It's actually pronounced Euler, not Euler. Uh, decided the, uh, that since we can think about these functions as machines, let's use a notation that's a little bit more mechanical, so to speak. So far, we've been using what's called the Y notation. So we would end up with expressions that ended up a lot like this. If technically, if something's a function, technically you can solve for Y, basically get Y on the side all by itself. Now, when we write it like this, let's see if we can get a few more uh, pieces of terminology in here. When we solve for Y, we say now that it's solves Y, so everything on the other side is, is a function of X. Now, another way to say this is since once we solve for y, we generally pick values for x, plug it in, and figure out where y is, we say that x is the independent variable most of the time, because x can be anything we want it to be. But once we pick a value for x, like in this case, let's say we picked a value of 1, you can see it tells us y is equal to 5. Since the value of y depends on what we pick for x, we generally say y is the dependent variable or y changes as x changes. Another way of saying that is y is a function of x. So uh, Euler decided instead of using this y notation, he was gonna replace the y with something like this. Now the way that you read this, f of X. That's what, how you read this side of it. This is f of x. Now that is not multiplication. I know it looks like multiplication, but it's not. This is it's called function notation. Now, how do we interpret what this is? Well, whatever the letter is there, that f, that is the name of the function. So this function's name is f, not f of x. The of x is telling us something else. The actual name of the function is just f. The of x part is what is plugged into the function. So in this case, this is the function named f, and currently there is an x plugged into it. Everything on the other side, all of that stuff, it's generally the function itself or maybe the function definition. Um, so how do we use this? How does this end up working? Let's come over here and let's use the same function. So there's our function f and currently it has an x plug into it. But what if I wanted to plug another value into it? So if I wanted to say, what is f of four? Well, what this is telling you to do is find a function named f, and everywhere there's a spot, plug in a 4. Well, here's a function f, and its spot is an x. So we're going to replace all the x's with the 4. Now, the best way to always do it, any type of plugging in is always use parentheses. So uh, I'm going to plug a 4 right there, and I'm going to go ahead and do this quick. 2 times 4 is 8, 9, 10, 11. So thinking about this in terms of a machine, we plugged in a 4 and it changed it into an 11. Or the domain was 4 and the range was an 11. Or the x value was 4 and the y value is 11. So a lot of different ways that we can interpret this using a lot of different language. From what we've seen in the past, we actually found one point on this line, right? Because uh, it's just be a line. We found the point, plugged in a 4, got out an 11. Because remember, this is the same thing as y equals. So what if I said, what is f of negative 5? Well, that says take that expression f, and everywhere that there's a spot, plug in a negative 5. So if I plug in a negative 5, that'd be what? Negative 10 plus 3 would be uh, negative 7. So the domain was negative 5, the range was negative 7. Or another way of thinking about that is I plug in a negative 5, I get out a negative 7. Plugged in an x, got a y value out. Now, the next thing about functions is they actually don't care what you plug into them, and it can get kind of messy sometimes. Like, what would f of t be? Well, just because there's a t there doesn't change the concept. The concept says find a function named f, there's one, 
and everywhere there's a spot, I'm gonna replace it with this. So in this case, I'm replacing all the X's with T's. So that would just be 2T plus three. Another thing, what if I said, what is F of M plus six? Real scary looking. Again, just because there's something scary here doesn't change anything. This says find a function named F and everywhere there's a spot, plug in an M plus six. So I'm gonna take the top one because that's the easiest one to do. And I'm gonna replace all the X's with M plus six. Again, using parentheses here makes it a little bit easier. So this is gonna be M plus six plus three. Now for a textbook, they'd probably distribute and simplify, but just for the concept, I'm gonna leave it right there. Now, in fact, the best way to think about this would probably be like this. Right, here's a function named f, and whatever you wanna plug into it goes into wherever there's parentheses on the other side. Uh, that's the best way to think about it, because all this function's ever gonna do is multiply something by two, then add three. That's all it ever can do. So whatever you plug into it, it's gonna multiply by two, then add three. So uh, this would be a great way to think about it, except for it'd be pretty messy to try to do math with just empty parentheses all over the place. So we generally put a placeholder there, and you guessed it, the placeholder we normally use is X. So the first thing and the last thing that I've written are actually exactly the same thing. There's absolutely no difference between the two, except for here we just have a placeholder. Now remember, functions don't care. So if I were to ask you what this would give us, uh, well, if some of you got it, it would be two times smiley face plus three. Now I always throw this example out there for two reasons. One was hopefully to get you to smile a little bit. Yeah, I know you didn't smile. You should, smiley face. Uh, but the second reason is actually a mathematical reason because you don't even have to recognize what the symbol is for this to work, right? Because all this function does is multiply something by two, then add three. It doesn't care what it is. And remember, that's just a symbol. There's absolutely no difference between a smiley face and an X. So don't get confused even if you don't see how that works. All right, let's just try a quick little example of this to make sure that we understand the, the concept. Let's start with two new functions. Let's say f of x is x squared plus 2x minus 4. Let's come up with a new function, so it needs a new name. Let's call this function g, 5x minus 2. <coughs> okay, so we have two new functions here, a new function f and a function named g. So I should be able to ask you a couple of questions here. What if I ask you to find f of 2, let's say g of negative 3, f of negative 1, and g of, I don't know, 10. So do me a favor, hit pause on the video right now, see if you can find these values for me real quick. All right, if you're back, let's see how you did. So I'm going to do the work over here. The first one says f of 2. So that says find a function named f and replace all the placeholders with a 2. So here's the function f. Now right now it has an x plugged in it, so I'm going to replace all the x's first with parentheses. Squared 2 parentheses minus 4. Now f of 2 says plug 2 in everywhere there is a spot. Alright, now it's just an order of operations problem. Uh, we got to do our exponents first, so that's going to be 4 plus 2 times 2 minus 4. So 4 plus 4 minus 4 would be 4. Okay, so f of 2 is 4. Let's try the next one. What about, what did you get for g of negative 3? Now again, remember what this tells us. It says find the function named g. There it is. And we're going to plug in a negative 3. So I'm going to take what g was. It has an X there, so I'm going to put parentheses because I'm going to replace what was plugged in with what I want. So I plugged the negative 3 in, and then again, it's just an order of operations problem. Do the arithmetic. So that's going to be what? Negative 15 minus 2, absolute value of negative 17 or positive 17. All right, still moving along. What was my next one? I said F of negative 1. So if I try that, f of negative 1, again, we're going to replace that with parentheses. 2 parentheses minus 4, and we're going to plug a negative 1 in. 
Using our order of operations, we're going to do those exponents first. So negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times negative 1 minus 4. 1 minus 2 minus 4. Combine all of our like terms. That's negative 5. <coughs> all right. So uh, hopefully you're doing pretty good. Let's try our last one I asked you to do. G of 10. Go into the function named G. Uh, with a minus 2. And plug in a 10. So when we plug in a 10 here, yes, that's a lawnmower that y'all hear right now. Do your uh, order of operations, and there you go, we get 48. So when you're dealing with function notation, you find the function name, well, whatever it is, and replace all the placeholders with whatever you're plugging in. Now, most of the time, you're given the placeholder as an X, but these could have been defined uh, any other way. They could have G of W or G of Y, it doesn't matter. You're just replacing the placeholder with whatever the value you want to plug in. All right, so function notation is not going away. We're going to use this for the rest of our math careers. So make sure that you understand how to appropriately use it.